This video is sponsored by Sketchfab. Sketchfab is the world's largest platform to publish, share, and discover 3D content on web, mobile, AR, and VR. With Sketchfab, you can publish, share, discover, buy, and even sell your 3D, VR, and AR content. Sketchfab provides you an online 3D viewer based on the WebGL and Web VR technologies, and this simply allows users and visitors to view content on mobile, desktop browser, and virtual reality headsets. And if you're wondering where next to publish and check out 3D content, go Sketchfab. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So today we're going to take a look at a couple of updates that has been done to the sculpting side of things. And some of these tools that we're going to talk about are tools that we've already covered previously in the channel. But there is a couple of updates that has been done to these tools and I kind of think that it's worth sharing with you guys. So we're going to start off with the very first one that has to do with the face sets. So the face set is more like what you have in ZBrush that is known as polygroups. But you know once it gets to Blender, there is definitely going to be a couple of updates and it's pretty cool to see these things here so in zbrush you have things like this which you can use to break up your you know your sculpt and if you want to simply use this for retopology this is also a very good way to go now we have that same exact thing in blender although this is not the first time we're talking about this we've already talked about face sets earlier and you know you know how you can go through with it so i'm going to simply delete the default cube and bring in the exact penguin from here and if you want to bring in your penguin from you know any other tool without exporting it we've already talked about this one in the channel before you can simply make use of the od copy and paste so you can simply copy your model from here and paste it directly here in blender without exporting this thing if you want to see how to do this or you want to get that script link is going to be in the description so moving on with this what we can do now is if we jump from here over to the sculpting section where all the magic happens you now notice that we have a brand new icon for the face set this was not there before but it's cool to see that now previously once you get to select your face sets you can simply paint them through if you hold down control you can you know grow that face set if you make another one you hold down control you can grow it all the way out and if you hold down shift you can pretty much smooth these things in it's also worth knowing that previously if you hold down shift and w you'll be able to you know make a huge scale of this stuff but now there is actually some sort of boundary respect that now exists so right now you can use this to select based off setting edges boundaries but this is actually not where the fun is so the fun actually lies in some very cool things you can do with this for example if i press the tab key right now switch over to our edge and simply zoom all the way right here i can hold down shift and alt click to make a loop selection shift and alt right here to also click to make a loop selection and i could actually go through and do this for as much as i want all right so with this done what we want to do now is simply go over to our uv and mark this as seam once we do mark this as seam we can now proceed to press the tab key jump back to the sculpting section which has to do with this go over to your face sets by simply having this selected you can go over to the face set section initialize face sets and initialize face sets by using the uv sims so you can see how interesting these things can be you can actually use any of these things right here to initialize face sets so instead of masking like we talked about previously you know make a couple of masks then convert those to face sets or hold down you know control to grow your face set or hold down shift and w to grow your face set you can just go through mark the sections which you want convert them to whatever thing you want you can also proceed with using loose parts materials normals and so on and so forth but then the most beautiful thing about this is with the face sets here you can now simply use the pose brush scale this pose brush a bit and with this let's go ahead and turn off symmetry scale it a little bit more and with this now you will be able to pose this object based off individual face sets now this pose brush will take a look at all of these parts and possibly consider them as joints so right now you can now proceed to creating things like this and from there if you want to also move a part of the body like that you can now simply use this to move that part of the body as it stands you can still choose to let's say we'll scale this a little bit less and we can now proceed to also use this to make some you know design changes depending on what you're working on and it's really cool to see how much development has actually come to the face set tool so if you want to simply you know make these things really quick you can proceed with doing something like that but then if you have a complex mesh let's say you have a mesh that you downloaded from the internet you want to try you know break things apart you can also do exactly the same thing with it so what we're going to do is for a very quick example we're going to jump over to sketch 
strap and drag ourselves a very nice toilet roll so with this if you want to simply separate individual parts so that you can sculpt on those parts you know work on some very interesting things with them it's also very very cool to see that all you have to do is switch over to the face set so let's go through and drag this out okay so you can have your face set too instead of you know proceeding with painting individual parts you can now simply go over to face sets go to this section right here and make your face set by loose parts and right now you can start seeing some amazing looking things going on for you so you can proceed with making some very cool stuff like this and if you hold down h on your keyboard you'll be able to you know get into one of these take a very close look at it if you press H, you can get this all the way back. If you hold down shift and press H right here, you can hide a couple of them. Some other cool improvements that you might also notice is with the mesh filter. So the mesh filter now supports face sets. We already talked about this one, but it supports face sets and there is now a relaxed, a smooth, and also a surface smooth and a relaxed face set feature that is now there. So we've talked about the clots previously, but now we want to talk about something. Probably we should talk about Suzanne. Maybe we should grab Suzanne out. Suzanne looks pretty nice. So I'm just going to simply drag Suzanne all the way up and we'll proceed to go over to the sculpting section where we're going to have a couple of chats with Suzanne. So what we want to do is we would like to remesh this. So we've already covered the types of remeshing that comes with Blender, which is the quad flow remesh and also the voxel. And I think the developers of Blender are actually leaning towards the voxel. So we're going to talk about the voxel. So the voxel now has a pretty cool neat feature that has been added to it so by default if you want to work on your voxels previously you need to go all the way down here and specify the voxel size or simply use this to pick up the voxel size you want to create and proceed with that right now i don't think that's a problem now now you don't even need to do that all you have to do is hold down shift and press r on the keyboard and you'll be you know welcomed with a very nice grid which you can use to specify how much of you know the voxels that you want so if i simply punch this all the way to the point like that and hit ctrl and r i'll be able to create a voxel that looks exactly like this actually let's try this with something way more interesting so i will simply go all the way back to what we had before so let's say we go all the way back like this and let's get up a very simple head model so if you want to get the head model you can definitely check the 2d to 3d video which we did that has to do with you working with king tools so what we're going to do here is simply raise this all the way up like this and you would notice that by default we have a very simple looking plane this is definitely going to change the way you walk because right now if we go back to our solid and jump over to what we have right here that has to do with the sculpting all right you can now hold down shift and r and instead of using your subdivision in previous times or maybe use the topo or something you know you can just get something pretty plain like this scale this however you want get the resolution of what you want and then you can proceed to get it to look exactly like this so if we go through here and turn on wireframe you can see what you have actually let's do this a little bit more hold down shift press r and you can scale this to actually fit into something more like this and hold down control and r and you subdivide this as you proceed so once you're done with this you can now proceed to you know add a couple of face sets if you want and you can add as much as you want if you want to play with the clothes you can simply proceed by playing with the clothes right now there is just this tiny underlining feedback stuff i guess this might be a bug but in most cases once you proceed to you know paint across severally it might for some reason clear or way off and now you can start getting the whole clothes feel happening there for me i think maybe that's a tiny bug and something that has to be fixed but if you just simply want to work with clothes of course this is simply easy to work with clothes as you can dive all the way back to this section select these use this very nice plugin which we already talked about that has to do with clothes called simply clothes and you can proceed to start creating clothes really really quick and these are some very amazing and cool stuff that is available right now in blender so in case you're trying to get into sculpting or you just want to work with the sculpting tool set that exists now in blender you can actually proceed to start doing those beautiful stuff and with that said there's also a brand new brush coming over to the sculpting tool which has to do with trimming so pablo has actually gone ahead to release a teaser that has to do with you being able to trim your high resolution mesh and even your low resolution mesh directly here in blender and this is very reminiscent to the tools that you can use in both zbrush and 3d code 
but for now this tool is still in its initial stage and once it is now available for you know uh use or once it is now implemented into the build for blender 2.83 of course we're also going to cover that in the channel and with that said i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go through and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and you know turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace